Losing that last bit of stubborn belly fat is something many people struggle with. It seems that certain areas of your body lean down earlier than others. But what if I told you that having stubborn fat is completely normal, and that trying to lose all of your stubborn fat often does more harm than good? In this video, I will dive into detail on the topic of losing stubborn fat. First, I'll explain why we have stubborn fat regions, and then after that, I'll also cover why having the goal of losing all of your stubborn fat can sometimes be unhealthy. So if we look at most typical fat loss processes, at the beginning of your fat loss phase, you will start noticing good progress and your body leaning down. But for most people, the area around the stomach and hips will often progress slower. It's common for people to first notice fat loss in the extremities of the body, like in your hands, your feet, or even your face. But when it comes to the center of your body, that's typically where fat loss is a bit more stubborn. And there is a biological reason for this, since vital organs and the reproductive systems are located at the center of your body, around the stomach and hips. As I have explained in other videos, the human body is designed for survival, not to flex our abs on Instagram. So if you start losing fat, your body will typically first look to burn the energy reserves in areas that are not as vital to your survival, and this can result to then having more stubborn fat loss around the hips and stomach region. The way fat cells are designed is in line with this theory. When you eat at a calorie deficit, your body signals fat cells to release energy in the form of fat. These signals are then received by two types of receptors, beta receptors and alpha receptors. Beta receptors speed up the release of fat, whereas alpha receptors slow it down. It has been theorized that stubborn regions of your body, like your stomach and hips, contain more alpha receptors than beta receptors, and therefore you lose fat more slowly in these regions. As you now probably can tell, the human body is sort of designed to hold more fat around the stubborn regions, so it's not like you are genetically cursed if you currently have more stomach fat and it's coming off more slowly than other regions of your body. It's to be expected that you lose fat slower around the stomach region. Now, that's not to say that we should simply accept the stomach fat and that you can't do anything about it. We can definitely still reduce stubborn body fat. While trying to burn off all the stubborn fat you currently have may be unrealistic, you can for sure still drastically reduce your stubborn fat regions if you approach things the right way. First though, let's look into what doesn't work. Because many people are struggling with having stubborn body fat regions, you will find many false promises online about how you can lose stubborn belly fat and you know stubborn belly fat secrets and things like that. But there are no secrets. Doing things like wearing waist trainers to sweat more around your stomach or taking fat burner supplements won't work. In fact, a recent review paper analyzed 21 studies about fat burners and found that in many studies there is no beneficial effect at all from taking fat burner supplements. Also, doing specific abdominal training won't help either. A 2011 study investigated the effects of training the abdominal muscles five times per week. The researchers found no significant decrease in abdominal fat from only training your abs without any nutrition changes. The fact of the matter is that losing stubborn fat takes time. The region in which you lose fat first or lose fat the most is mostly genetic and we can't change this. All we can do is make sure you maintain a proper calorie deficit for continuous fat loss and eventually also the stubborn areas of your body will decrease in fat. This means that the true stubborn body fat solution is not necessarily taking a supplement or using an advanced training method, but it's simply to stay patient. More often than not, people are on the right track with their fitness journey, but we see these unrealistic transformations online and this makes us doubtful about our own process. But if every two to three weeks you are noticing a significant drop in your body weight and your body measurements are decreasing, you are in the process of achieving your fat loss goal. You just need to stick with it for longer to actually achieve the objective. Now, it is also worth mentioning that throughout your fat loss process, there might be some plateaus here and there that you need to manage for you to successfully reduce stubborn fat. Let me use the progress of my online coaching client Adelai as a good example. When we started our fat loss approach, Adelai lost about 10 kilograms in 13 weeks by eating around 2000 calories per day. But after that, we had a few weeks of not really progressing much and we had to increase the calorie deficit by decreasing Adelai's calorie intake to 1800 to 1900 calories per day. Once we did that, we were able to take the next step in Adelai's progress and he lost more fat. I mentioned this to point out that the calorie intake you have at the start of your fat loss process might not be effective three months from now because your metabolism adapts as you lose fat. So your calorie intake might need some tweaking throughout your fat loss process to continue making fat loss in the long term. I have made a video about managing fat loss plateaus a few weeks back that you can check out if you're interested in learning more about this topic. Now back to the topic of stubborn fat and specifically why trying to lose all of your stubborn body fat might not be a healthy goal. Unless you are trying to compete in a bodybuilding competition, having a healthy body fat buffer is good for your energy levels and training. I know this from experience. 
in the past months, I made it one of my objectives to properly lean down and I was successful in this, but then I got a bit greedy and I was like, let me try to lose even more stubborn stomach fat and that backfired. So I originally cut down from 79 kilograms to 74 kilograms. I'm 175 centimeters by the way. And everything was all good here, but I tried to test my limits and then cut down to 72 kilograms and this didn't feel right. I looked smaller, my muscles were actually somewhat deflated because I wasn't able to eat as much. And also in training, I just noticed my stamina dropping tremendously. It's almost as if losing those extra two kilograms to lose more stubborn stomach fat cost me the enjoyment of the process. And at the end of the day, the process comes first. If I can't enjoy my process, it won't last and my consistency will eventually fade. It's important to remember that body fat is quite literally an energy reserve for the body. So if your body fat percentage gets very low because you try to get rid of all of your stubborn fat, your body has little energy reserves and this will reflect in your daily energy levels as well. So yes, we can definitely reduce stubborn body fat if we are patient with the progress, but at the same time, it's also healthy to somewhat embrace a little bit of a cushion around the waist because then you have a more healthy body fat percentage. Trying to, so to speak, get shredded to the bone typically won't make you feel great. All in all, a quick summary of today's video. It's normal to have slower fat loss around the stomach and hips. The body is designed in this way. Also, don't fall for these, so to speak, secret stubborn fat solutions on the internet. The only way we can reduce stubborn fat is by maintaining a calorie deficit and staying patient. And lastly, for most people, don't set the goal of losing all of your stubborn fat, as this requires you to cut down really deep to the point that your energy levels are negatively impacted. And that was all for today's video. I hope you now have a more clear understanding of why we have stubborn fat regions and why having some stubborn fat around the stomach and waist is completely normal and healthy. Now, if you found this video helpful, then definitely leave me a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And I will see you in that next video.